Welcome to Cujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integration. Welcome back to Cujo Sound. This here is part two of the raycasting series that we are working on right now. First, we showed you how to actually do a raycast. And in this video, we're going to show you what we can do once that raycast blocks or give us something specific back and how we can make that controller parameter that can work as our occlusion filter. Enjoy. This means that we, in our code here, can say if hit, which is the Boolean value that we created here with our physics raycast coming. And then if it hit anything, then if out info dot collider dot name equals audio listener dot name, then this here down ha happens. And what we just want to do is that we simply just want to say debug lock. We are hitting the camera because there are a few interesting things about this. So when we press play now, if the raycast hits anything, which it will, because it will be hitting the object that we are throwing it towards, we should be getting this message down here. We are hitting the camera. We are hitting the camera. So if we go behind the player here, it's not super obvious, but you will notice that the line of information down here, you can see right right now it's, it's ticking in with information because the camera is not, be, it's not behind the player. But if we move the camera down behind the player, the raycast will actually hit the player physically first, which means that it hits something else than the camera, and then we are not hitting the camera. We go down here, you see? We're not hitting anything right now, Not at least not anything useful down here. So theoretically, we should be able to say that if, let's just say, if we are not equal to the listener name, then we could say sound is occluded like this. That means that if we walk over to this fire barrel and we hear the sound of the fire barrel burning and we move the camera down behind our player, then we should get this message. And then you can obviously imagine that here in this part of the code, we should be able to write whatever we want and kill the sound and muffle it a little bit. And that's a very, very simplified form of raycasting. So if we run over to the fire barrel, we should be able to hear the fire barrel. And once we move the camera down so that the ray hits the player, we could see that over here slightly more obviously. Once the white line crosses the player and hits that collider there, we should get a message saying that the sound is now collided. See? We can even clear it here. We should be able to have the camera over here on the side of it. And as we move through the player, we get this message. That sound is occluded. If we move the camera here, we should be able to see clear this here. The sound is occluded while the ray hits this player. Now remember over in Wise what we did? We created the fireplace sound that we have here and on top of it we have these RTPCs that are controlling it. So if we press play on this fire thing here, then if we set these values to anything specific, then then they will be occluded. And we can try and do that real quick. So if we walk behind the player now, it should be like this. Or more like, set it to 0 0.6. Like this. So if we go into the code, and then instead of saying here, sound is occluded, we can say ak sound engine dot set rtpc value so as you may remember in some of the previous videos i always like to make my things public so i'm going to make a public string that we are going to be calling rtpc volume i'm going to make that equal to rtpc underscore occlusion volume because that is the name of the RTPC that we want. The reason why I make this public is simply because that when you go into Unity, if you want it to be something else, then it can be that. And how much do we want it to occlude? 
public float volume occlusion, and we want that to be equal to 0.6 f. The reason why we write f is so that it knows that it's a public float. Now in Unity here, you will be able to see the volume occlusion that we've set and the RTPC name that we have set there. So down here, when this happens, if the ray that we are throwing is passing through our player, we want aksoundengine.setRTPC to change the value of RT RTPC volume towards our volume occlusion. We wanted to do so on this current game object. So once we have set our RTPC values to be the occlusion volume and the low pass, because I've also added the low pass, that else, of course, it should be these two values here again, but they should be set to zero. The reason why we set them to zero, this means that once we go behind our player, the sound will be occluded. And once we are not behind the player, the sound will not be occluded. So let's try and run to our object and we'll see if that works. So right now we are not behind our character and the sound is playing as normal. Once the ray cast goes through the player, it's not hitting the camera, which means that we have told our code to then occlude the sound. That works like that. So if we go into Wise and over here and we select our low pass, add game parameter to sync watch list, and the same thing with our volume, you will be able to see it in F12. F12 is an advanced profiler where you will be able to see all these values. Now, we go to F12, and over here under game objects, you need to sort of figure out which one is your current object that you're watching, but we know that we only have one under watches, that is the WW Audio Emitter, so you can right click on that and say, add to watch list by ID. So right now you can see it down here because we clicked that we wanted to see the volume. And now you will be able to see RTPC occlusion volume for the camera, for the controller, for all objects that has this basically in, in, in it. So our listener and our audio emitter. And it's the audio emitter that we want to see. Now if I hit play, nothing will happen because we, of course we need to sync up to our game like this. Once that is done, and when we run around our level, you will be able to see this parameter move. So once I start running with my character here, over towards this here, you will be able to see the nice little parameter here for our WW audio emitter. It should be changing whenever we get the message, the sound is occluded, and our raycast is being behind our player. Check this out. So now we are, we can do like this so that we can easier see when we're going through the player. So once the camera goes through the player, we will get this clear message that the sound is occluded down in our console below. And you should be able to see the graph make a small bump as we do so. You see? And once I move away, it does like this. Now, because we have written this code here to be game object specific, we should be able to say fire, and let's say copy paste this fire barrel here and move it to over here. In that way, we can in Wise, once we press play, be able to see two of these, two of these rays that will fire at our player. Then you will be able to see two of them over in Wise, being able to see the individual values of each of these. So let's try and hook up here again. And once we press play, you can see on the left side that there are our two, two rays. One of them is occluding, the other one isn't, and now it works the other way. So let's walk over to this one here. Now we are occluding this object here but if we move the camera and we are including the other one, as you can see on the line, we are not, we are only watching this current object. So over here in watches, when we press play, you should be able to see both of them. You see, we now have two audio emitters here. 
One is for volume, the other one is also for volume, but we have two audio emitters here, and those are the individual raycasts for our player here. So if we move out, you should be able to see as we move closer, you should be able to see them individually moving depending on which one of them we are occluding. Right now we're occluding this one over here on the left. And now we are occluding this one over here on the right. You can see the graph in the lower right corner right now. But they are changing, which means that we are setting an RTPC value uniquely per object. And that's really smart, because in that way we only need to set our RTPC control values, our parameters, here on the very top mixer of all these sounds, which means that if we attach our occlusion script to anything below in Unity, then we will be able to simply set the value how we want it for each of these, which means that we can now create other objects that we can simply control uniquely every time we need to do though. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video and this taught you a little bit about raycasting some more. We will expand on this and we will make sure how to debug this a little bit better. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching Cujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity and Wise integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Cujo Sound where you for as little as one dollar a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Cujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.